come and play with the bubbles? Hello, I hope this finds you very well. It is a rainy Monday here, uh, very dark. I think I've already sat down to try and record, but my brain kind of did the thing. Um, and then the rain came down so heavy, I thought you probably wouldn't even be able to hear me. So I have started a second time. We've had a little bubbly interruption from little Audrey who is the in-house kitten, who sadly doesn't make as much of an appearance as she used to. I'm sorry about that. I'll try and start taking more footage of her again. I know that a few people have uh, expressed sadness for that, so I will do my best to add a little bit more Audrey in our, in our life over here. Um, I have a cup of tea this morning. This is my second one, uh, which I've deemed very necessary, even though it's almost my cut off I think it's 11 o'clock so it's almost my cut off for tea try and not have caffeine before after midday if I can help it a cheeky second of like a an infusion like a second or third of an infusion of a cup of teas tend to be fine but that's a caffeinated waffle for you um yeah I've got uh, a few finished objects I've got a few things that I've mended or adjusted um including the frogging and i've got one new work in progress which i've had on my knitting queue if you want to call it that for a long long time and i thought i would use a different yarn but we'll come to that when the time comes um <laughs> yeah you see um i hope you're doing better today <laughs> i feel good surprisingly good and I actually think because we had a really relaxed weekend for the first time in quite some time it was productive but it was you know an autumn cleaning if you will like scrubbing things and just yeah so it felt it felt good but it felt very restorative which even though we've had a really lovely time if like for the last few you know few trips we've been on this was the first Monday where I kind of felt a little bit rejuvenated in quite some time, so I think that's probably why I'm not like high functioning, I'm just, which is cool. So, hi, all that to say, hi. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to get a, one of my felted coasters to stop the clunking of my tea. Okay. With we're doing the thing. Um, so I am wearing my Braids of Grass, which is a pattern by Albiona McLaughlin. I really love this garment. Um, the pattern had been gifted to me a long, a long time ago when I knitted it. Um, uh, and, and for various reasons that brought me a lot of joy. And, uh, yeah, so it has cable along the yoke, it has cables along the cuffs and also the hemline. Which I really, really love. I don't know, it just gives it something different. I quite like to wear this one tucked at the front. Is it a French tuck? I don't know, but I tend to do that when I'm wearing it. I'm not today because I'm kind of wearing kind of slobby clothes I guess is the thing um just very relaxed I, I was gonna get dressed properly today I felt that vibe and then I was like no it's a rainy Monday I just want to cuddle up and cozy up so this is the vibe <laughs> uh I knitted this using Ewan Ply's Shropshire DK I really love this yarn it's 
lofty, it's a bit toothy, it's a bit buttery. Um, and even though it has the loft, it has enough spin in it to not seem to create pilling issues. Um, I'll come closer and show you, but I, especially here, which is where I tend to get the most pilling, I don't have any. So that's been really good. It's been quite hard wearing, I think. Um, I haven't worn it loads and loads. Uh, I mean, it has been summer here and it's been a hot one. So I've not had loads and loads of time with my knitwear yet, which is why I kind of am thinking I might postpone my year of jumper review. I might record it today, but I'm kind of thinking I should move it until February or March where I've had a bit more time to wear in some of the newer jumpers. Ah, hi Audrey. Oh, she's come to sit on one of my <laughs> recently finished objects. Could you, you, do you want to sit somewhere not on there? You can sit on this one? See if we can get her in shot. Yeah. Maybe you can join us. I also have a Jessie Mae's My Secret Little Crop on. I'm not going to show you. I've shown them too many times now. And I will show you if, I, if I'm if i wearing it as part of what I'm wearing, but it's hidden. Um, and I'm wearing my uh, very, very quick, uh, <laughs> kind of needing a wash. Uh, slippers that I knitted using Alaphos Sloppy. Um, I think it's Alaphos. Might be even the thicker one. Uh, but I love these. I knitted the pair in a day, like in an afternoon. And I ended up putting just the recipe on my Kofi. Just, first of all, because I haven't put it anywhere and it means that I can refer back to it because I've got a few friends that have asked for them for Christmas. Um, but yeah, that's there. Yeah, they're very comfortable and I really like wearing them. Especially at this time of year where it's cold on the feet. I'm gonna need to get my sock blockers down. I am, I am on fire. <laughs> So I went and got them, but the first thing that I want to show you is something that I haven't shared here and I did finish it uh, because it was just so comforting at just the right time. Um, I knitted a Rizzo blouse by Poison Girls a while ago, I'm not sure, maybe two years ago, and I used our local yarn which is one of my favourite because it is the, the closest to me yarn that I've ever used. It came from between five and ten miles from down the road um, and a couple of my favourite breeds, Jacob, which is one of my favourites of all time, and Valet Black Nose, which are just adorable. You might have seen on Instagram the, the videos of them, little sheepies bouncing with the little black noses. Beautiful. They're very sweet. Um, and I had dyed up the red, this colour red, and I really liked the jumper, but it was that I had knitted, and I've I've said this before, I don't really need woolly t-shirts. Oversized ones make sense, and they're a bit more easy to layer, but a slightly fitted, really woolly, essentially a summer t-shirt, just didn't work for me and I thought I might wear it in the winter layered but I didn't so I ripped that out as part of my frogging party I had a little while ago and I just loved the colour and I knew that I could have put it into a jumper but that I'm a bit more about than neutrals really and this is sort of a neutral for me but it just I had the call to the shawl and so that's what I did and when I went to Perth Yarn Festival I met lovely Alex from the Ancestral Craft podcast, my brain, um, 
and she was wearing a shawl and I just, I loved it. It was beautiful, it was hand spun, it had been naturally dyed. And I don't know, something about the pattern just called to me. And so I decided I would knit that and cast on and the combination of garter with a little bit of interest throughout the first section, which let's uh, which is here. And then the applied border, which I haven't blocked this. I gave it a little rinse, um, just a little soak, and then let it just dry. I will block it, but I just wanted to be able to wear it, and I didn't want to have it pinned out on the floor when everyone was home. So, yeah, so this bit is a little bit rolly, but I have no... It doesn't bother me right now. Um, and it will... Um, yeah, I think it will block out beautifully. Uh, I did run out of yarn. Now, I thought I weighed it and had enough yardage, but knowing me, I did probably knit it a bit loose, therefore requiring a bit more yarn. Um, but I also might have misplaced some of the yarn. <laughs> so anyway, I didn't have enough. Um, and part of me was going to go from this thick border to uh, taking the middle stalk and trailing it and then just doing an I-cord bind off for the second half if it, if I needed to. But I ended up kind of really enjoying the applied border, the little branches and I think they call it catkins in the pattern. Uh, it's a pattern by Nina. Um, I can't remember what's her name. It'll be on the screen. Um, so, I, because I enjoyed it so much, I decided to see what I had in my wall pantry and see if I had anything that would sort of match. And weirdly, I found the last of the piece fleece that I was sent um, from lovely... <laughs> from lovely Maggie of the Sunder Knitting pod podcast. Um, and I held it up and it was too thick. So <laughs> what I did was I divided the two plies into one plies and made it tiny. They were bigger than this, but I made a little a couple of little balls of single ply piece leaf. I don't think, unless I told you, you would notice that this, all of this, is a different yarn entirely. Which is wild to me because there's neps in it, but it kind of matches the purple, um, like, purple flecks in this. Um, but yeah, half of, almost half of the border, that you'll probably be able to tell here. Where are you? Yeah, so this half is the original yarn that I knitted the rest of the shawl in and this is the piece fleece. I've been wearing it loads, I've been styling it in different ways from having it sort of wrapped to hung to tied to just left. Um, It 
it's it's a really nice size for me actually i think it's one of my favorite sizes and i would be inclined to knit something like this again for myself or as gifts in fact i, I keep thinking if my mum would like one of these for Christmas. I'm not sure that she does need any more shawls, but I really like it um, and I had a lot of fun making it. And I love the finished item. It also goes very well with my D&D jacket that I finished painting a while back. Um, it just says, it's a black fake leather jacket that says fantasy trash on the back um, and it goes very nicely. <laughs> So I've been wearing that as a pairing quite a lot. And it is quite nice to have something a little bit more... I don't know. It reads maybe slightly more alternative than any of my other shawls. But I really love it. I'm very happy. And like I said, it brought me a lot of comfort when I felt like I... I've been needing it. Feeling a lot more... Um, settled in that way too um i didn't block these i put one on a blocker mostly because i finished these on saturday and alex had very cold ankles because he was wearing commercially made ankle socks and I put these on his feet and he said thank you for my new socks and proceeded to wear them all weekend. Um, but I'm really chuffed with these. I haven't woven the ends. He wore them with the ends not woven in. What are you going to do? But there is a pair. Um, they will get a wash after after I filmed today. These were made using the Ironwood Hill Farm yarn that I was kindly sent. That is a blend of 60% fin fibre, which is lovely, and 40% mohair. It's a two-ply fingering yarn. For some reason I can't... I, I've, I've shared the link and I will share the link again, but the website doesn't seem to work so I think I shared a Facebook page instead. And it was naturally dyed. Um, it's just a gorgeous yarn. It's It feels good. I don't know about the addition of mohair in socks. I just think it's one of the best things that can be done. And I think especially good in a blend. Because I feel like... I'm probably wrong, but maybe, maybe not. I feel like mohair is so strong and is so slick that having a little bit of toothy, toothiness in there kind of keeps it all together. It... I just really am so happy. Um, this was just my normal intro improvised. Is that like one that I keep in my head? Internalized, improvised um, socks. Um, so I've done four stitches more than I normally would, and I think I might move up to four stitches more. So sixty-eight stitches for no nylon socks. It means that they fit both me and Alex really nicely. So I did a simple wedge toe. I started with 12 stitches, I think. Judy's Magic cast on. Increased up to 68 stitches. I did the foot in stockinette. I did the top in three by one ribbing. I did a short row wedge heel. Again, super easy, just memorize it. And then I did three by one rib for a little bit and then one by one rib for a little bit more than I normally would so that I could fold it down with my Dr. Martins. Um, but also Alex just wore them straight because he has, he needs that a bit more than I do with his cold ankles that he had. So yeah, really happy with them. And I can't wait to see how they wear. Um, I keep thinking about my no nylon, like, a kind of a roundup, but I think it's really hard because every all the socks are getting a different amount of wear because some I've had a lot longer and some I haven't. So I'm trying to think of a good way of doing that. I should maybe have started documenting as I went um, a bit more so that I could show things at different things and at different states. 
different lengths of wear. So I might try and start doing that. But yeah, I can't say how much joy these little little socks brought me and now in turn bringing Alex. Because <laughs> uh, they're now apparently his. We're sharing them, honey. I love you, but we're sharing them. <laughs> There's my hair in here. Oh, Audrey. Are you okay, honey? Um, she was trying to sit on this, which she's been sat on all weekend, that when I haven't been wearing it. Um, secondly, I did finish a second pair of socks, which I only finished last night. Um, I was trying to clear my needles a bit. I just felt like I wanted a bit of a refresh and a reset. Um, with the hope of doing a lovely cast on with a dear friend of a hot water bottle cover. Um, which feels very luxurious but absolutely necessary given prices of energy. We'll stop talking about it there but um, but I, I've, I've used hot water bottles for years. I've got a little one that I crocheted myself a cover for and I've had it for I'm, I'm guessing seven years? Has it really been that long? Yeah, about seven years. Um, but I've also got big hot, I've got two big hot water bottles. I've never had covers. I tend to wrap them in stuff or, you know, just put them in the bed before we get in. And anyway, um, so that would be something really special to knit. So I am working on my little, my little plan for what it's going to look like. Um, and yeah, so I've been clearing my needles to just sort of reset, have a bit of a refresh. Again, sort of an autumn winter clearing, if you will. Um, and before we were meant to play D&D last night, we didn't get to play, it's fine. But um, I thought I would finish up and I did. Uh, but I, I was tempted to block them this morning. The first thing I did when I get up. But again, I thought I'd actually show you how much of a difference blocking makes, even though as you might be able to tell, my blocker is not actually big enough to give them a good block. But the difference is quite obvious, I think. Um, this is the blocked one and this is the yarn. Even the type, like the, the colour work here, Is quite a lot, I think, the difference. Unblocked, blocked. <laughs> um, so these are the Choose Your Own Adventurer socks by Disyarning Designs, Harper. Harper's amazing. I've said this before about this pattern, but goodness. So not only does it have multiple charts for the different sizes of each class, so in Dungeons and Dragons, you have classes, you might have a bard, a rogue, a barbarian, a wizard. Harper's designed charts for every single one of those, but also to make it more friendly for more sizes, they have included gusset charts, which is so cool. And I have to say they look beautiful. Uh, and I was a bit sad that I didn't need to add one in and I might consider knitting them for someone else that might need a gusset just so that I can. <laughs> um, I'm gonna hit pause because I didn't realise how long I've been talking. Um, yeah, so this pattern will be released on the 9th of November, which is super exciting. They have designed a, a bonus chart. I know what it is, but you'll see because this is a secret test and everything. Which is kind of fun. Um, yeah, I did the Druid one uh, chart, which is because that's who I am um, in real life. Harper sent a quiz around that told, like, gave you questions and then told you who you'd be if you were a D and D character in real life. 
makes sense to me anyway. Um, and I used some BFL high twist sock yarn that I had from when I was dyeing yarn. Um, and they're just some yarns I've had in my wool pantry for a while. These were, I have gifted quite a lot of my nylon sock yarn that I had. I didn't have loads. I've gifted quite a lot of it away, but these two colours were just something that I knew that I would wear, Alex would wear, he's gonna, he was wearing one of these before it was finished, um, so yeah. I'm really pleased with them, I can't wait to see more people making these, I would really like to knit more of them and I can imagine that I will. Um, um, and while we're on D&D, quickly. I have created a form which I'll put the link down below. I've been contacted quite a bit about people wanting to play D&D &D and be that learning or just joining a group. Um, I'm interested in playing more, uh, especially as winter's in. So I'm currently kind of con looking to play some one shots and some sh maybe shorter campaigns over the winter. So. Because I'd been asked so much, I created a form basically that has a little bit asks for a little bit of information about what your availability is, if you want to play as a player or a DM, if you're happy to do both, what times you're available. Um, and I'm going to try and divide people into groups on my... There's a server that's not really mine, it's just a D&D &D and crafting server that I've got. You don't need to be into crafting to join it. Um, where we just talk about Critical Role and Dimension 20 and things. Um, but I'm going to try and hopefully create groups so that people can hopefully play. I'm just doing my best to facilitate this because I've been asked. It's quite a, a strange thing to do, but it's, you know, people have asked, I'm trying, and hopefully we'll have some nice groups to play D&D with over the winter. So yeah, that's a thing that we're doing. More D&D. Yes, I love these socks. I want to knit more. I'm excited to get these on my feet. I will block these as soon as I have finished talking today and weave in the ends so that I can cut the ends off before, once they've been washed. Um, and yeah, they're just so cool. Harper is a genius. While we're on Sockland, I'm just going to quickly share that I have a tendency, apparently when it comes to sock knitting, to cut my ends before I've washed them and also to do them quite short. I have learnt my lesson, so I'll put in some footage of these before, um, but two pairs of socks that have had quite a lot of wet, like, uh, um, I say quite, these were one of my most pair, worn pairs of socks the last couple of years, and these are Alex's, one of his most worn pair of socks too, hand knit socks. This it was knitted in Garth Norset Snowdonia sock, really, really hard wearing, um, I love these for walking in. These were knitted using Highland sock, if I remember rightly, from Stripey Cat Yarns, in the Nutcracker colourway, which Sarah's actually offering again. I love these colours, I don't know, it's sort of festive, but sort of Alex in a nutshell. Um, but where I've been now washing a lot of my hand knits in the washing machine... What? Yep, um, time's getting less and less, but things are getting better and better, so with roots and stitches and things I've not had as much time I guess and just with the summer being really intense um so I've been doing it and I, it's been successful but the tops of these cuffs came undone so I spent some time yesterday fixing them
time and it felt really nice because whilst I was going to do it very poorly I just picked up the stitches and was just going to weave it in. I ended up bind rebinding it off entirely and leaving a much larger tail doing it properly so it's just a nice for me it's nice to see things being looked after and to keep them going. There was no reason these were not going anywhere I mean I think one of these socks had been undone for like undone for ages maybe six or seven months and I was just wearing them. I am an animal but yeah it was just really satisfying and nice to sit down and to take care to make things work as they should rather than just looking at them and going yeah I'll do that some point having a yeah um so very pleased that that was a little job that I've been wanting to do since I noticed it I think it was two weeks ago and I just got the time to do it I also I'll show I'll share the the whip before the frog you're, you're, if you were here last time, you'll know what I frogged, I would imagine, but... Frogging is ripping out, in case you didn't know. I do f try really hard to explain things. Um, and it's a weird balance, isn't it? Because if, if I explain everything from the start, then more experienced knitters will be like, yeah, why are you telling me this? And then if I don't, then there's some people that might not know. So it's, I try and be conscious, but not. Yeah. So one of my favorite yarns in the world is Rail Work. It, it was the first skein of yarn that I purchased having met the owner. It was the first skein of uh, yarn that I purchased at a yarn festival. It has a beautiful story which I recommend you going and having a little read and Christina who owns it just has a really good energy to me. Um, I went and did a workshop at my first yarn festival. I thought it'd be a good way to get immersed into it and ended up not having much time before I left but before I went in I spent maybe 45 minutes talking with her and then at the end of it I was like I just need to make sure I get, you know it was kick out time I was like I just need to go and make sure I get a skein of this yarn and I loved it so much I ordered some of the same batch to knit myself a ranunculus which she sat on so I was going to show you this but just to show you how it wears but she loves it so I, <laughs> I'm not gonna not gonna move her I think that one's in graphite which is the slightly l lighter version of this one which is called obsidian I'll bend down a bit so you can see <laughs> um Yes, so it's 100% merino wool, it's organic, um, and one of my dear knitting friends sent me four skeins of this for my birthday this year, which is wild. I don't undervalue or show lack of gratitude for how grateful I am to be in that position. I you know, I don't, I don't like talking money, it just feels weird, but I, I don't have a very stable income in the nature of getting unwell and being better, and I am getting better. I had a good old reflect last night with Alex about that. It's very exciting. Oh, look at the colour difference. Oh no, it's just the lighting. Um, yeah, like, I had a, a good old think about that yesterday and a, a wave of gratitude for that. But I don't have expendable income um, and I can't get over how special this is um, and yeah I'm very grateful for it please don't I don't expect anything um, I, I literally do this because I want to share I wanted to connect and now it's just 
really nice to keep that connection and to keep the creativity going and I'm exploring different things and thinking a bit differently and yeah um so I have cast on um and it doesn't look like much <laughs> because it's not really but I am knitting the Big Love cardigan by Anstrick Anastrick Ankerstrick um and it is way more what I would like in my wardrobe than the morning rituals jumper that I frogged. Um, it will, this bit is in ribbing, but this will then will turn into broken rib, I think, from memory. Um, it's got a different pattern anyway, oak texture over it. It is has a big collar, which is what this is. Um, so this is the back. It's got a very clever construction, very interesting construction. Um, that I will explain a bit more when I am further along so you can really see what I'm doing But this is the collar and this is the back and the short rows for the back is where I'm at and then I will knit down I think to the underarm or near enough and then I will pick up for the left front and the right front separately joining the collar and the shoulder as I go um, But I've been I've been wanting to knit this cardigan for I think three years, maybe three and a half years. I, it was one of the first patterns that I really saw and I was like, yeah, I really like that. And I thought about knitting it in Let Lopi, which I purchased yarn for. And I started it and I didn't love it. It was the wrong color for me. And I ended up giving that away to um, a lovely knitter who came to the UK. Um, I won't divulge information, but they came to the UK to visit family and wanted some yarn and I was like, yeah, that's really nice. So it's actually really, I hadn't thought about it. It's quite nice that I paid something forward and someone very kindly did the same. Um, my heart bursts a little. Um, yeah, so I'm, re I'm, I'm looking forward to that and I don't have that many cardigans. I have two black ones that I wear almost all the time and it will be nice to have another slightly dark cardigan. I wear my red one that I've knitted a little bit and I've got a wrapped sage green one but I kind of save that for good. I don't do that with many of my knits but it was the cardigan that I wore to my wedding so I try and save it for slightly more just not just around the house basically which is what I consider good. If it's, if it's only worn in the house it's a bit like it's nice but um yeah so that is bringing me joy but i've not spent too much time with it i am going to cast on a jumper very soon uh, which i'm quite excited about and i do think i'm gonna do a little cull before i do my jumper review video maybe not though maybe i should share which ones i'm gonna i'm gonna share which ones i'm gonna pass forward we'll do it properly Sorry, you're literally getting my inner dialogue today. <laughs> um, and in here is my frogs. Morning rituals. I did it. I am, I, I, I took it out. I ripped it out. 
I do really like this colour. But I do think I will over dye it and I might over dye it before I knit with it again. I might even request that Alex does it. Or at least helps. Um, and just take it down, just make it a little bit deeper. Um, but I couldn't pinpoint why and what the reasoning was. And I knew for some reason I, my intuition I'm quite good at going, yeah, it's not right, and just being quite confident in my own choices. But I, 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 for some reason, I wanted to ask last week, and I'm really glad I did. I, someone commented, and it really resonated, and I hadn't thought about it before. And whilst it seems really silly sometimes for me to ask other people's opinions of what I making and wearing it, it really helps so I do think it's something to encourage from time to time we should be able to make our own decisions but actually this really helped so it it said that I am drawn to more lighter weight area items and I think that's really true I am wearing a DK weight jumper but it's not knitted at a den particularly dense gauge it's it's dense enough that it's gonna last which is I think the balance that will always be a little bit challenging to strike. I really love how this is wearing and I do want to be conscious of how things wear. Um, but yeah, I hadn't thought. I do really like lighter weight pieces that I can layer. Um, and this, again, whilst it's going to be DK and ribbed and lofty, it will be airy still and it will have and yeah, I hadn't thought about that in the in the past, and I think that will have an impact and, and add another layer of consideration to my future knits. And I just thought that was interesting, and I wanted to share it just in case it might help you to think you might be someone that actually light and airy doesn't work. You want big, dense, squishy cables, and you know, and you might want it fitted, whereas I might want it. A little bit more positive ease but not too much like yeah i just thought that was a really nice interesting insight that i was gifted so thank you i do really appreciate that um yeah i think that's everything i'm not gonna end it there because it's too abrupt um but what else we recently went to france to visit my parents that was really really nice i am gonna share some footage if you don't want to see a Christmas tree being put up, hold about, about your eyes at the ending. Um, but my my mum is like a Christmas elf. It's the best way to describe her. She's amazing. Um, always makes Christmas a big thing um, and cosy. Not not like um, yeah. And they're going to France for just a few days in December and wanted the tree to be up when they got there so as a family we donned our Christmas pyjamas I borrowed my mum's Christmas jumper that I knit her previously and we put up a Christmas tree it was lovely um, and we also watched a Christmas film and it was just quite lovely uh, so I'll share a little bit of our time in France with you um, I think there's a little bit of footage from another little walk we did in Casterbury Park my local park and I'm even going to put in a little bit of footage of Alex in a helicopter with his little sister who is now a a pilot, which is so good. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to explain this without... Do you know when someone deserves something and has worked hard for something and you just wish you could have gifted it them yourself, but you just there's no way you could, and then they get to do that? And it's not just something they get to do once, it's a lifelong thing. So yeah, that's what's happened. Um, congratulations, Pilot Simpson. Um, yeah, so Alex got to go up in the helicopter with his little sister while she was adding um, hours into her logbook that she needs to do. Uh, and Alex had a blast, so I'll share some of that. It's kind of nice. And I think that's it. I'll see if I can get some more footage of Little Mai, maybe, to share. But, yeah, I hope that you are finding some joy in whatever you're making, if you are making. 
I hope that you spend some time doing something nice for yourself, for any loved ones you might wish to, and I hope you take care of yourself. Thank you so much for sitting down with me today. I hope there's been something in here for you, and I hope to see you again very soon. Bye! Number one ferry companion. Are you terrified? I am. Of what? Of me? Am I driving? No, nah, you're perfect.
I missed it. <laughs> Never to be recreated. Thank you.